What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So for those of you that follow me on YouTube already and subscribe to my channel, you guys saw that I put a little post out about wanting to do the 12 volt mod for this car. So if I'd call it a 12 volt mod, I'd say it's just kind of improving the car. I wouldn't say you're like modifying anything. You're just kind of taking some stuff out, adding some stuff. But before we dive into it, I'll kind of explain what exactly we're doing. So now I'm not an absolute whiz about this whole concept, but from my understanding is you have this guy right here, which is a relay, and then you got a resistor pack, and it'll be found here. So from what I've gathered doing this whole thing is when you turn the key, turn it on, and that's the other thing that's weird about these cars, if you guys haven't already figured it out, the fuel pump does not come on until you're actually cranking or obviously the engine's running. But with this, what happens is you turn the key, you get full 12 volts, pump kicks on, and then after the car is warmed up or it's been running for a little while, it drops from 12 volts to nine volts. It won't be pumping to its fullest because it'll be low on current, it'll be cold, low on voltage. So people do this relay mod. Basically what you're doing is you're taking this old factory one out, you're adding a new relay in, you're redoing the wiring, and then you'll be pumping it the full 12 volts constantly the whole time when the engine's obviously running or you're cranking it over. So that being said, I've got this already running on my car and I'm gonna just take you to the back here. Now, don't mind the mess, okay? There's wires kind of going everywhere. I've left it like this on purpose just to show you guys which wire is gonna go to what. There's the relay right there. I'm just using a 40 amp relay, but I'll tell you exactly in detail what wires need to go where. And here is my ECU software. So this is the ECU EMU classic software. It's the same software for the black and for the classic. So right here, I've got my output pulled up and it's on the auxiliary one and I'm going to invert it. And you can see there, fuel pressure's coming up. Obviously it's toned way down. I've got to change all that. Okay, you can hear the fuel pump rolling and you can hear the fuel filling up inside there. So for those of you that have done this or have tried to do this, you probably ran into the same problem I did. And that was messing with the relay up here in the engine compartment, unplugging some wires, trying to connect it, trying to get, trying to bypass it just so that thing runs with the full 12 volts. It's actually a little bit, a little more involved, I guess. I, I don't know. This is just old technology. Just, we want to get rid of that, right? So we want to put in a new relay, new wiring, and this will be out of the engine bay. For those of you that wanted to clean up the engine bay, like me, I wanted to get rid of this thing. I mean, it's, it's bulky, it's, it's massive. So that's the size of the relay right there. And it's a lot bigger than actually just a smaller 40 amp relay that you can get like an auto parts store. So you guys can see I've already cut, put different spade terminals, all sorts of stuff in there, just to experiment to try to get rid of this thing. And now we're gonna go to one of these. This is just a cheaper one that I've got right now. The one that's in there is a little bit nicer, around so you guys can see. So it's just a 40 amp, 12 volts, and you're only gonna have the four pickups on it, the four terminals, whatever. And I'll tell you exactly which one goes to which. Okay, and then before we dive into it here. I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to access to get to everything. So in here, this plate right here, everyone thinks that your fuel pump is actually inside here and it's not, unfortunately. Your fuel pump is actually kind of sitting over here. This is the plate for the fuel sender, sending unit, so your fuel level. That's what this is right here. And you'll see you have one connector and you have two connectors. I might pull that all the way out because I've got it jammed in there, but you can see this connector right here, the one that's got more wires. So you've got uh, four wires in this one. And this one, you've only got two. This is your fuel pump one. This is not, don't mess with that one. Now you'll see here, I've only got one wire. I don't know if your guys is like this. The only thing I can assume is my fuel pump is grounded to the hanger inside the tank. I didn't do that, I don't know, I never messed with the wiring, all I did was cut and splice in the new fuel pump. This is a Walbro 450 by the way. I just dropped the tank, put the new fuel pump in, replaced the Walbro 255 I had in there before, 
and I didn't change anything. I didn't like just, just the wiring. So I don't know if they're grounded like this from factory or if I've got something that's, let me explain here. Something that's like a little off, but it works. So the, the way you guys can check this to see if it's running the same way, you're gonna take the blue and black wire. That's gonna be your positive. And if you touch it to 12 volts, don't do it for very long because you're not running through a relay or anything. You don't wanna burn up your pump but touch it to 12 volts and it should kick on right away. So that's what kind of threw me off. I didn't have a complete circuit. Obviously your ground would be the other side. So you'd have one going to the negative, one going to the positive, and then your pump would kick on. It's not a huge deal. You'll just want to keep that in mind. If you're trying to like complete the circuit and you can't figure out why it's not working, that's probably why. Just try it and just see. You can also check it with the voltmeter. Just make sure that everything is running right. The last thing you want to do is put your new fuel pump in and then burn it up because you're touching it right to 12 volts and you're just running the pump constantly. It's not the way to do it. So just don't do it that way. That's simply just to test it. You'll touch it. You'll hear the pump kick on, take it right back off. Don't let it run and you should probably be fine. Okay. This is obviously easier because I've got my battery in the trunk. So I wanted to leave the relay back here as close to the battery. So I'm not running a bunch of wire from the pump to the relay and also for the, the power. Kind of just run everything down so you guys can see it. 86, number 86 on the uh, relay, that's gonna be a 12 volt ignition. 30 is your 12 volt constant. 87 will go to the pump and then 85 will go to ground. If you're not running a standalone, you wanna just run this normal ECU, factory ECU, you will ground this. So that'll go to the ground either on the battery or on the chassis or something if you have a good ground and that'll complete your circuit. So again, that's what I'm using. Cigarette lighter, don't worry about that. That's for my injectors. But I, ECU IG cruise control. I don't have cruise control anymore, so I'm not worried about that and it works perfect. Okay, so yellow wire right here, and you can coordinate the colors however you want. I know there's obviously the right colors for the right thing, like obviously red's for power, but do it however you want. That's up to you. Yellow. That is running up to the fuse box that is by the driver's side feet. Now, I don't have cruise control anymore, so I don't really care. I had to go through with the voltmeter and just check to see which one, which fuse or which in the fuse panel, which one was 12 volt switched on, because you've got to have that, that's what's running the pump. So you can't, I mean, I guess if you wanted to put it up to like a rocker switch, you'll hit the switch to start your car, true race car fashion, but I don't want it that way. I want to be able to turn the key and don't have to worry about that. So. Again, you'll need 12 volt switched. Okay, and then the green wire, that's going to my ECU. You're gonna be ground. This is gonna be the ground portion of your relay and the output, you'll just pin it into the ECU and then you'll have one that goes into the pump and then you'll have your 12 volt supply right there. Now with the factory wiring that's still in the engine bay, you don't need to worry about that. I'll eventually remove all that stuff, but I tested it, it works, and the pump will run by itself when I turn the key on. So for kicks and giggles, I'll show you one more time here. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking at fuel pressure here. That is on the fuel pressure regulator. That's an AEM sensor. And again, that'll be wired up to there. This one right here, again, auxiliary one. I'm gonna invert the pump. Okay, you can see it going, holds pretty steady. And again, you can hear it filling up. Now you can let it run like this because the fuel will return back to the tank. So you're not gonna build a bunch of pressure and then have issues. Okay, then we're gonna shut it off. Then I'm gonna show you what happens when you turn the key on. And I'm gonna crank it over and you'll see the fuel pressure go up. And side note, for those of you wondering how the cam and crank um, angle sensors did, I will show you right here in triggers. Change this over here to hall sensors on both primary and secondary. And on secondary, which is gonna be the cam sensor. So this guy right here, secondary. For the particular sensor I use, you are gonna to want to enable the pull up. And everything else should be good. And then down there in the bottom corner, you'll see that turn to green and it'll say synchronized. And then you will also see the fuel pressure go up as well. Okay, well, that's that. So hopefully this helps you guys out. It's pretty straightforward and it's a pretty good 
thing to do, especially if you're running a standalone, you're going to need to run, obviously, some output to the fuel pump to regulate that, to control that. So you're going to want to do it anyways. Like I said before, if you're running factory ECU, just ground that to the chassis or to the battery or whatever, and you should be good to go. If you go to do the ignition switch, make sure you're using some sort of switched power that holds enough, enough amperage. So make sure you have something, some sort of source that can support the amps, or you're going to burn up wires if you use like 7.5 amps with something that draws way more amps than that, you're going to burn up wiring. So just make sure you're doing everything the right way. So like I said, where I use the ECU IG source on the fuels, the fuse block, that is a 15 amp fuse. So it's not going to draw any more amperage than that. And I should be good to go. That being said, like, comment, subscribe. You guys have been awesome. I appreciate everyone that has subscribed and comment thus far. And, uh, you know, if you guys want to see something that I've done that I maybe have brushed over, uh, message me in the comments or whatever, and I can do a video for you guys. And then if there's something that I missed, just hit me up in the comments. That way, someone else that may be doing this, if I miss something, they'll see that in the comments, hopefully get it the right way, but I'm pretty sure I got everything right. And that being said, we'll see you guys on the next one.